four young women Mridula, Varsha, Vinayal and Tanvi. So give them a hand. They're going to ask me questions and then I'm going to talk. And they have the freedom, and you have the freedom to stop me and say, look, I'm simply not asking this question. Please answer. Okay? Yes? Yes? yes. Good. Um, Ma'am, uh, we learned that the RTI has empowered um, us in strengthening democracy. We'd like you to answer exactly how the RTI has helped in strengthening the democracy and how it will help in the future. All the questions. Uh, I would like to know, uh, as, as somebody who doesn't want, who's not a politician or a social activist, how can I? Uh, at a grassroots level, contribute to the strengthening of the democracy. I'd like to ask regarding the Lokpa bill, like how would it help to strengthen the democracy or would it uh, topple the balance due to the concentration of power? So, that's my question. Ma'am, I'd like to know about the views of the MKSS on the Aadhaar, the unique identification number. It has various pros and cons, and we'd like to know what you have to say about it. And also about the Narega scheme, how it can be further strengthened for the economic upliftment of India. Thank you. I'm also a sophist because I'm smart. <laughs> I haven't lived 65 years for nothing. I'm going to take your questions, but I'm going to add and subtract. So when you feel that I'm going off the line, please tell me. I now know roughly what you want to hear. But as with the woman who shut me out of the house, she also had to say something to me. So we we'll now talk about what you want and what I want to share with you. And you can ask me any question. It doesn't have to be particularly linked to what I'm saying. It could be as women together, what we think of the future. People in the audience will also ask later. The one thing that I learned that I, when I first went to the village, what led to the right to information was a long history of understanding. It didn't happen in one night. I just didn't get up one day and said, oh, right to information. Nor did Chuni Singh, nor did Mohan Bar, nor did Nikhil, nor did Shankar, nor did Sushila get up one day and said, oh, we want right to information. It's a process you go through. So what was the first concern was the injustice especially by the state and by government offices. Whenever you go to a government office, the first thing they say is that you're telling lies. They don't tell you directly. They may say it indirectly, but they always say you're telling lies. they'd say in Rajasthan. And they would say there are two versions of the truth. It's your version of the truth. I used to wonder how can there be two versions of the truth? The truth is one. There can be two sets of facts. But even that is impossible. So it's slowly and gradually that the power of information became evident to us. But I'll trace some of the issues which made it evident to us. First of all, as I said before, listening to people. So whenever I went and sat, I had my lesson very strongly that day. So whenever I went and sat with women, I listened. And there's a huge political history to listening. Any great political philosopher, thinker, activist will say you have to listen to the people. Gandhiji went on this big yatra around India listening to people before he even designed the national movement. You have to listen to know what they want. So what did they all ask for? Poor women. Very poor women would say, we want a little bit dignity. They would say, hame mazduri chahiye. Hame aapki dayani chahiye. Hame mazduri chahiye. Hame kaam chahiye. And what would we say in Delhi? We say, oh, you know, they need handicrafts. They need to know how to embroider cloth. They need to know how to do uh, sewing. Have sewing classes for them. Or they would say, give literacy. There are some standard solutions. Every actress who went into the village thought of four things. One was the toilet. My friend Dunu Roy says that every actress needed a toilet. 
So the first thing they thought of when they went to a village was a toilet. Now everyone had to have a toilet because I need a toilet. The second thing was literacy. Because we think literacy is everything. Literacy is very important. But the mind thinks without literacy. Knowledge exists without literacy. There's wisdom without literacy. Literacy is a very important tool. And so many of us literate people, what have we delivered? Very little. So when they had this huge literacy campaign in Ajmer district, there was this fantastic slogan on one of the walls. They used to say, Is jile ka kya pechan? Pada likha har insan. They had erased it and written, Is jile ka kya pechan? Upar chaddi niche banyan. And when we went to them and said, Ye kyo likha hai? They said, You don't run your primary schools where the children go in such large numbers. Teachers don't come there. They are eager to learn. And you are insisting that these tired people who come a day in the cave must go and learn literacy and you provide these oil lamps where none of us can see because we don't wear spectacles. So, we don't to But we don't listen to them. Still, our schools are badly run. And of course, there's a whole controversy about the kind of education that India is selling today. I won't go into it because it is not my business today. But I have an opinion on it. Then they said, what did we say? Who? Oh, there's a lot of these terrible traditions we must finish. Child marriage must be finished. This, that, and the other. So we go there with an agenda. Arrest everyone who has child marriage. When I sat with Mangi, my friend, and I said, Mangi, why do you get married when you're so young? She said, you know, you don't understand, Aruna. We don't get married now. The whole of the social structure will have to change. I won't get a son-in-law or a daughter-in-law unless I get married at a, get my children married at a particular age. We are striving. She said, my mother got married when she was three. I got married when I was 10. My daughter will get married when she's 17. It's a process of change. Do you know in Rajasthan, the real marriage is when we send the child to the in-laws house. The marriage is like a, what you call an engagement. Anyway, I was trying to discuss this with her. I agreed a bit, didn't agree a bit, we still have quarrels. Then came professors from Ajmer, sorry, from Jaipur, to discuss with them, a group of women, about marriage. So they came. Mangi and Norati, Bila, my very progressive village friends from different communities, but largely Dalit were also there. So when the professor said, you shouldn't have this marriage early because it's harmful. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. So Mangi heard them very patiently. And then she said, how much have you studied? 13th class, 14th class, 15th class, which means MA, BA, and so on. We haven't gone to school at all. Chalo, we are all crazy people. We are illiterate people. We don't know anything. We get them married very early. But you all know the law. You all know about dowry. She said, is there any amongst you who has either not received or not given dowry? But then silence. Then she said, listen, you guys have everything. Aapke maas sab kuch hai. Dhan hai, padhai hai, sab kuch hai. If you don't change, how do you expect us to change? So you can't have dowry niti. You can't say to us that you must not have child marriage and practice dowry where you are. So the most important thing that is required for bringing about change is that we must be, now the slogan all over the airports, you know, we must be the change. We want to see, I don't know, the exact quotation, something like that. So one thing that urban India has forgotten in going into rural area, that we think that we are so fully perfect in our ethics, in our perception, that we need to do that. Since all learning happens between equals, the right to information, the concept of right to information was born. And there was humility to understand that people wanted something which we couldn't give them. And where is the nerve center of all this? It didn't come any day, as I said. I remember when I went in 1975 to this village called Thelonia, and we started a project because I first I worked with an NGO, a development NGO, a very good one, but an NGO. We started a project for schooling, getting the night school children, getting children to the night school when they're working during the day, 
are going and improving the level scoring in the day school. And we used to pay them 600 or 400 rupees, I forget a salary. And I thought it was too little, but that's what the project came. A very famous woman called Mrs. Vijaya Mune, who used to be director of CET, Center of Education of Technology. She came. She was a strong woman. I really admired her. She was one of those old women whom I thought no end of. Strong, outspoken, good looking. And I thought one day I'd like to be like her. Vijay Amule came and I said in front of all the teachers, why are you giving them such a low salary? You should raise their salary. One of the teachers said to me after that, you know I thought you were lying to me. Because everyone lies about budgets. They never tell you the truth. So I thought that you were asking for 1000 rupees, pocketing 400 and giving us 600. Then we realized in what is now called the Barefoot College, which is called Social Work and Research Centre before, that every budget must be pasted on the wall of the institution. Every worker must know how much money comes and how much money is spent because there is no such thing as trust where money is concerned. 